We now live with an array of sensors that we carry on our bodies at all times, from the accelerometers, gyroscopes and GPSs in our phones, to our watches, to the wearable devices that we carry. But one of the things we haven't quite seen yet is an interaction between the sensors that we have on our bodies and the sensors that are in our environments. And when those two things actually start talking to each other, amazing things can happen. An early project along those lines that we tracked recently was the Array of Things project in Chicago. The Array of Things project is a network of sensors and communication and computing devices. And these devices are placed throughout the city on street corners to let us measure things about the city that don't normally get measured with that level of resolution, temperature, humidity, precipitation, air quality, sound, or vibration, or light. Roughly every 15 seconds, each one of these nodes will report all of its sensor data to multiple repositories on the web. Open, free of charge, every 15 seconds, every node, every sensor, the data goes out. Imagine that you're walking through the city of Chicago and you're running an application on your phone. That application will see one of our nodes and it will grab all the data from all the sensors and store them on your phone. Now at the end of the week, you can look at the number of steps you took, but you can also look at what was my exposure through the week to carbon monoxide or excessive noise. Or imagine that you're not familiar with the downtown area. You've parked your car over here and you're eight blocks away. It's 10 p.m. You can then have an application that guides you through the city along the path that has the most pedestrian activity or it may be the path that's the brightest path. From a financial point of view, cities like Chicago spend millions of dollars on salt for roads and sidewalks. If you have 100 or 1,000 temperature readings through the city, you can put the salt where you need it and not put the salt where you don't need it. That doesn't just save money, it means there's less salt that can run into the Chicago River or into Lake Michigan, so it's an environmental benefit as well. The city of Chicago is home to some of the world's most beautiful architecture. And so our first thought of a commercial box hidden by some artwork has evolved into making the enclosure itself essentially a public work of art. So we worked with design students at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, and what we did is design the box digitally. And then from that digital design, what we're able to do is vacuum form plastic around that form. Almost all the things that we design are modeled in, in a 3D application so we can understand all the implications of shape. From that 3D digital model, we could use toolpath creation and a CNC machine to cut the original blank for the thermoforming process. The final enclosure will be made out of ABS plastic. This is a, a kind of material that we feel really comfortable with. We have the tools for forming it here. It's curved to meet the most common radius of a Chicago City light bulb. The thing that's most exciting to me about the project is we're not just deploying a fixed set of technologies, but we're deploying a capability. We're opening this to educators, to the public, to companies to use the data. And ultimately, we can start to envision applications for sensors that we don't have yet. When you have sensors in the environment around you, lots of amazing possibilities open up. You can imagine an environment that knows who you are, what you want, what you need. And that sounds a little crazy, but with projects like the Array of Things, you begin to see exactly how we might get there.